YouTube and a warm welcome to the Essentially Crypto channel. My name is Ian and as always I'm your host uh, and today we're going to do a bit of a walkthrough, a bit of a learning of how to use Epico Regal. I know a lot of people have been uh, jumping in from Vivi into Epico Regal because of the rumours that Epico Regal is partnering with Vivi. Now we pretty much know that's for sure because Epico Regal themselves tweeted it out but they did delete that tweet since and uh, Vivi haven't announced it. But you've got to think there's lots going on in the Vivi community at the moment, obviously with the uh, the transition to Ethereum and all that kind of stuff. So they had a lot on their plate at the time when it was tweeted. And also, it's not very much of a big fanfare, is it? To just sort of, you know, one person to tweet it or, or the group to tweet it. So therefore, I guess they're probably building up to, uh, to tweet it and let everybody know what's going on and do a proper announcement like they would normally do. But obviously, that's all just speculation. We don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. But I'm pretty sure that something's going to happen with it, whether it be VV Collectibles uh, with Epico Regal, or maybe they're going to use Omi in the ecosystem, or whatever it will be. Uh, but either way, I thought I would tell you a little rundown of how to uh, how to do this. Uh, as I say in the video, um, because this is actually me re-recording this bit, because of the fact that the last video I did just went so long with this Epico Regal bit that I decided to put it in a separate video all on its own. Uh, but Orion Crypto Trader is also coming out with a video very soon, going the ins and outs of how to play Epico Regal. And since He's a much better player than me. Uh, I would suggest you also watch that video um, if you haven't already. So uh, there you go. But anyway, let's get into Epico Regal and uh, we'll see the gameplay in Basically. action. Uh, the way it works is uh, very, very simple, and that is that you start off and you go into this game here. So you go to the App Store or, uh, or your Google Play and you download Epico Regal. Okay, so that is the name of the game. Now, at the bottom here, you can see you've got these little areas here, and these are for dynamite and bombs, as you can see there, and also you can get rockets as well. At the top here, you've got the cups, you've got the quest, you've got the free, you've got the collection. Down the bottom here, you've got the comic that you can watch, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's an animated comic of what this is actually based on, um, because the game is actually based on Indian folklore, from what I can gather. Um, and then over here, uh, what is that section? Digital toys. Oh, that's the digital toys. Now, I showed you that back in uh, December time I took a little uh, jump into the app there so you can see the digital toys and how close they are to the Ikomi uh, or the the VV toys that we have or digital collectibles they're pretty much the same so now we know that uh, Venkatesh who is the the chap who uh, who runs this is actually a advisor to Ikomi so that kind of makes sense and he probably has people who work on the same things basically so uh, that's the digital toys but we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on the game for today so basically uh, let's play this little video for you so if you were to click on the cups you can see you find your ranking at the moment I'm ranked 12 I believe I'm lower down now uh, this one here BB I don't know who BB is if it's you then feel free to add in the comments um, I keep playing you and you keep on winning it keeps on killing me absolutely killing me and there's a, there's a reason for that and I'll explain why people can really easily kill you when you go up against real people versus when you go up against the computer because a lot of the time you're up against the computer and then occasionally you'll get put up against a real person just depending on how many players there are one thing I will say is as it gets more popular the more likely that you're going to get put up against a real person and depending on what levels you are, that makes a difference, okay? And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but let's have a look here. You can see that I'm about number 12. You can see Orion Crypto Trader is way up there with 24,812, and he has been grinding. I'll tell you why I know he's been grinding, because you get 30 points for every time you win the games. You get 30 points for winning, you get 20 points, or around about 30, it depends, because if you, if you knock down all three castles, you normally get about 32. If you knock down one castle, you normally get about 28. And if you knock down two castles, you get 30. So, so therefore, and it depends on how much of their castles you've knocked down, basically, as to what points they give you. And then if you lose, then you lose between 18 to 22 points, I believe. So therefore, or maybe it's 18 to 20. I can't remember exactly um, because I haven't lost for quite a while. So therefore, um, but it takes away points from you. So basically, if you lose, you get points taken away. If you win, you get about 30 points added. So think of the amount of games he would have had to play in order to get to 24,812. Uh, in fact, we're going to look now because what you can actually do is you can click on Orion's name. So let's click on Orion's name right now. And you can see here, this is the games that he would have played. So he's got a win rate of 91.82%. He's played 1,968 games. Okay, so bear in mind that each of these games takes approximately three minutes, unless you get really good and you can beat it quicker, maybe 45 seconds to a minute, something along them sort of lines. So he spent approximately 1,968 minutes, maybe times three give or take, I guess, let's round it up to 2,000 minutes 
um, uh, so that that way for a one minute game, and if it's a three minute game, that's 6,000 minutes for a three minute game. I've no idea how many of that is in hours. Put in the comments below. I'm not going to do the maths right here in front of you because it's really boring and it's not exciting. But the point is, he's played a lot. So therefore, and you can see that he's, um, yeah, these are his characters just here that he's chosen to use. This one here is a knight. And basically what happens is you let the knight go and he goes down to the castle and he starts hitting anything. Or if there's a character nearby, then he will fight that character. Okay, this one here, I'm not sure what he is. I've got, he's got a giant hammer, I believe, but I can't remember completely. This one here is one of my characters as well, the same one I play, and this is an archer. The great thing about the archer is you can put him in the middle and he can fire off to the castles, and the castles can't get him because their fire doesn't reach as far. So therefore, you can shoot things down. The only thing is that their, their level of energy is not very good, so therefore, it's easier for other characters to kill them. Uh, this one here was a bird. You let the bird go off, uh, and he does his thing, basically, and he fires um, little, little pellets at people. This one here is a pretty cool dude. I use him in my, my thing now as well. And basically what happens is he will jump over a wall, he'll run towards the castle, and he will bash that castle. So therefore, you don't have to worry um, about whether or not there's other characters nearby. He won't deflect to those characters. However, if there's a building or a little cliff with monkeys throwing off um, pellets, then he will go and divert to that. Okay. So bear all this in mind when you're trying to choose which character to use. This one here is a set of bombs, and what happens is you place the bombs somewhere in the, uh, in the playing area, and then the bombs will jump out and they'll run towards the nearest character, or nearest building or nearest castle and then they will um, basically bomb that person as well. Uh, the witch, I absolutely hate this witch. This witch basically always kills me. Um, this witch has a staff that lets out like six bugs at a time and then these bugs also fire things as well. So that's a really strong character to have. I personally don't use it because I can't stand her because she was always beating me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a, a um, an interesting character. Uh, and this one here, this fire one here, basically what it does is it shoots fireballs. Now, it took me a while to learn this and I only found out when I actually played Orion Crypto myself because of the fact that um, in the AI version of this, this one just floats around and does nothing. So you can really easily shoot it or whatever and get rid of it. Whereas in the actual version, when you're playing against somebody, that character is really strong and has fireballs. Now, they'd start off on different levels. As you can see, he's now up to level 9, level 8, level 9, level 10 with that one there, level 10 with most of them. Uh, I believe that's the highest you can go at the moment. Um, most of mine are sort of level 7 and level 8, and you can level up your characters with gold and gems, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, so now there's a little glitch here and it keeps on going back down and, and back and forth but basically you can see that his warrior level is level 10 as well now the thing about the game is that you play uh, the computer and then as you carry on going as you get more gems and you, uh, as you get more cups you uh, you're supposed to level up your characters with golden gems okay but what can happen is when you get to a certain point you haven't got enough gold and gems to be able to level up your characters anymore so therefore the computer characters get harder and it's harder and harder for you to play and in which case then you have to try and level up your characters and the way you do that is by getting gems and then you use those gems to open the dynamite and the bombs and the rocket to be able to get extra cards to then play pay gold as well to be able to level up your characters okay so this all sounds a little bit complicated but it's actually fairly easy uh, it took me a while to learn this I only learned this at around about 7,000 when I got to 7,000 I was like hey why are my characters getting so low uh, and then I realized that I can actually level them up I accidentally clicked on something by mistake I clicked on the gold thing and it just suddenly leveled my character up and I was like ah Okay. Uh, incidentally, we are in the Watchers Corp. So if you want to join the Watchers Corp, you need a thousand cups in order to be able to join. So it's a little bit of playing, first of all. Then you can join after a thousand cups and you can join the Watchers Corp, which is a kingdom. Now, I don't know what you get from being part of a kingdom, um, but as you can see, our kingdom is uh, fairly high up on the uh, on the leaderboard. However, the leaderboards has recently been changed and messed around. So if you actually look at the leaderboard of the kingdoms, we are no longer top. But when our cups get taken back into account, then probably we'll go back up top again. So, um, but therefore, there's a few kingdoms that have arisen now. There's the VV users as well now, because a lot of VV people are coming into it. Hence why we're talking about the game now. Uh, so, uh, what else is there to say about this? So, let's go back to the main screen, shall we? Uh, so, oh, there you go. Look, you can see there's the there's the leaderboard there of um, of uh, of the thing. You should just click around, and you can you can find out what there are. So, the Akomi homies. That's another one. Akomi homies are currently top with fourteen thousand three hundred ninety three cups. Uh, well, we know that the Watchers Corp had a lot more than that because we had a lot more between us. But um, as you can see, for some reason, that, that that little scoreboard is a bit screwy at the moment. But, you know, I digress. It doesn't really matter either way. But when they start putting back the cups, because they had a, an issue where they, they reverted cups. One night I was playing, I was absolutely grinding. 
and I managed to get myself to like fifth position because Orion wasn't even on the board for some reason. I don't know why. And then the next day, they literally wiped away all of my cups. So I'd, I'd got myself like, I don't know, like a couple of thousand in one night. I was literally just playing constantly. Got myself to what I thought was fifth position. I was really excited. I woke up the next morning ready to go to fifth position to try and play for more cups to get myself to sort of first position, thinking that maybe Orion was you know disqualified or not playing anymore and blew me. But I was back down into 97th position because what had happened was they'd put back all of the cups back to how they were and they'd wiped out my cups completely and I was back down into like I don't know like 900 cups or something so I had to contact support and let them know and then I got boosted back up to 5,000 cups and from then I carried on playing basically um, and that's when I got up to uh, the level I've got up to now which isn't great compared to a lot of people believe me there's a lot better players out there than me but this is just a quick uh, rundown of what you can do in the game so anyway you've got the quest log this is the daily quest log if you go there you can claim you can get two gems and 100 gold pieces just for playing every day so all you have to do is click and in that case I've claimed you get two gems uh, and thingy now your gems and your gold all go towards building up your characters and if you don't have gems and gold you can't build up your characters you can also add uh, this here which is a, um, a watch time so therefore you can once a day I believe it's once a day or once every eight hours I think it is you can watch an advert and that will give you ten gems okay and then as you can see my storage is up here so I've got two gems up here I've got 16 uh, no, 1,607 gold, and I've got, uh, what's that, 14, whatever that is, points there. I'm not really sure what they're for, but basically the more you play, the more you get, and I think it's to level up your, your level, you see. I'm currently on level 7. But the thing is that when you level up your level, that means you can move into the next layer. And it means that if you're playing against people that are level 8 and your characters are still level 7, then you're not going to win very many of them, even if you're against the computer. So be very careful with this, and this is the biggest tip for you, and that is that when you've got your gold and your gems, make sure you decide which characters you want to level up before you do it. Make sure you're meticulous about that unless you want to spend loads on buying gems and all that kind of thing. Because I didn't do that, I didn't realise, and therefore I levelled up a lot of my characters that I never even use anymore. So make sure you're happy with your lineup that you have and decide which lineup you're going to use. Because now I can't level my characters as easy because I've already wasted all my gems and all my gold on the um, the other characters essentially because the way it works is these little slots here every time you play a game you manage to get either a dynamite a huge bomb or a large rocket and depending on which one you get you have to click on it and wait that certain amount of hours in order for you to be able to open it or you can use your gems up the top here to be able to open it quicker and instantly when you open them inside there you get cards to level up your character and normally you get some gold and some gems as well but not that many and then what happens is when you want to level up your character, uh, which I will show you now, actually, let's see if we can go to uh, to where it is. So this is your battle deck. So what you would do is you would click on this bit here that says collection. OK, so you click on that bit and you go to your battle deck. OK, and then these are the characters that I personally like to use. OK, so we've got the archer. I've already explained. This one's another knight that basically just goes towards the castle and fights or it goes to the nearest thing. We've got the wind. Uh, this one here, I purely leave this on there because my son likes playing with it, basically. But it's kind of OK as well. Basically, what happens is that wind will take whatever's in its path. It's only a small area that can be. You put the wind in and then it will drag everything in to that path and stop it from moving. So, for instance, if you've got a witch coming towards you with her like firing things, then what you do is you put the wind on her and then it will take a little bit of energy away but more importantly it gives your other characters like for instance if you've got a um, an archer or something like that that's firing towards them or if you've got your your archers in the tower that are firing towards them it gives them a chance to be able to kill that character before it gets close enough to the tower to be able to hit it okay so that's kind of the idea of that one this guy here as i said he's pretty cool he just jumps over everything unless there's another tower or something in the way uh, this one here is like monkeys in a tower um, i don't know why i like this one so much but basically what i found is that if something's coming towards you if you basically put one of these buildings in its way it then diverts its attention towards them and not towards the towers so therefore you can stop your towers being killed uh, this one here is monkeys that fly through the air the good thing about this is it stops everything in its path in the terms of like if there's anything on the 
game board, as long as you aim your monkeys correctly, it doesn't matter where they go, they will jump over everything. The bad thing is they're not very strong, okay, until you level up really a lot. Now, I haven't leveled that much. I'm only at level five with them. I need to collect more cards in order to do that, which is where I made the mistake of leveling up other characters, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, that knight there is pretty cool. I've leveled him up quite nicely to level five now. He runs all the way down and just hits the castle or goes for the nearest thing. And then there you've got uh, a little house with monkeys that come out and they fire. So like three monkeys come out and they fire little spears uh, and that's pretty good as well. I like to try and mix it up a bit and have a couple of buildings and a couple of strong characters because the buildings themselves, when you put them down, they stay there until they've been killed, whereas the characters tend to move around. So they will basically, they will go along, they will try and get a castle and then they might go for the next castle or they might go for, you know, the next character in line, whereas the buildings stay where they are. So I find they're really good. If you've got something big coming towards your castle, you stick a building in its way, it has to beat up that building and kill it before it can go to your castle. Okay, I hope this all makes sense. It's really... It's really not as difficult as I'm making it sound, I don't think. But anyway, so if you want to level up your characters, or if you want to change around your deck, now again, this took me a while to learn, uh, and that is you just go onto here, and all you do is you click on any one you want to, basically. So you click on any one of these characters, um, and then you push the button uh, to be able to change it. And the way you do that is you click on the character. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it for you now. This is a video that I'm sort of narrating here, so... Therefore, um, yeah, you can see you've got you've got four different decks here, by the way. So you can load up your characters in the four decks and switch them around every game if you want to. Um, I personally don't do that. I tend to keep the same ones. You can see there's a trident there if you want to use that. That basically goes comes out of the air and it lands on like a character and it, it, it does like lightning and kills them. Um, you've got arrows there, which is where you just point to the character you want and you fire arrows from afar. So that's pretty good if you want to... You want to kill something in that radius. You've got this yellow thing here, which is like um, like a sonic boom type thing, I guess. You sort of fire it out and it kills the character. Um, let's have a look at some of the other characters. I'm not sure if I can uh, if I can scroll it all the way down. Because uh, as I said, so I'm, I'm looking at this here. Uh, what other characters are there? Okay, yeah, let's go through the characters if I can. Uh, I think I'm going to show you how to change it now. So what you do is you click on the character that you want. Uh, so let's have a look at all these characters, right? So you've got this guy here. This is a really big ogre guy, and he comes out, and he's really, really super strong, especially if you level up the character. The only thing I found with this guy um, is that basically he's really, really slow. So you would put him out, and he would take ages to walk to the castle. So I personally don't use him that much. This guy here is like a, a wizard type guy. I've not used him, so I don't really know much about him. This guy's got a little trident. So again, he's quite super strong as well. Um, so he's a good one to have, but again, quite slow at getting to the place. Uh, this one here, can't remember what he does. This one here is a, is that bird that I was talking about before. Uh, this one here is a set of three guys, I believe, or maybe that's the set of three guys with the little hammers. So basically they just go to the nearest person or they go to the nearest castle or whatever. Uh, you've got the trident. This one here is magic potion. Not really sure what it does. I dropped it on things. It just seemed to do not much. This one here is like a rolling log of fire. Um, again, not really my thing. Some people use it in their in their thing. They like it. This one here is lightning. Oh, the trident is different, by the way. The trident doesn't have lightning. It's just a trident that comes down. The lightning uh, it sends a lightning bolt down that kills things. Uh, oh, this is the one with all the hammers. This is the little guys. They've got there's three of them. They got hammers and they just beat up things. They're they're not very fast as well. Um, you've got this one here, which is like. Um, I think that's the monkey house, isn't it? Is that the monkey house? No, no, no. This is just monkeys that walk along. Um, you've got this one here, which is a load of birds that go. And then you've got the witch here as well. Uh, let's have a look. I'm not sure if there's any other ones that I've missed. I think that's it. But anyway, so this guy here is like a wizard uh, and he does stuff now. So if you want to change him, what you do is you click on him and you can see this little button here. You see it says 2000. That means you need 2000 gold. And then when you click on that button, I'm not sure if it's going to let me do this um, or not, or whether I did click on it or not to show you. Not sure if I did, but it tells you the exact amount of cards that you need, okay? So if you want to change him, all you do is you go to this button and you say use rather than info, okay? So you click on use and then you just click on the one you want to swap it out for. So in this case, uh, what am I going to swap it out for? Let's have a look. I can't remember what I swapped it out for. Um, well, I swapped it out for the one that was in the corner there. So whatever the one in the corner there. So now I swapped it back out. Oh, I swapped it out for the monkey house. So I'm going to put the monkey house back in because I like that. But you just go use and then you can see it switches in your deck over there. Now, the reason I said that I used up a lot of my, my money, essentially, on characters that I'm not going to use anymore, not going to level up anymore, is because, as you can see here, Archer, I use him a lot. I like him. Um, and you can see here it's going to cost me 5,000 gold to level up my character again. So not only is it going to cost me 5,000 gold, but if I actually click on the link itself, uh, which I believe I'm about to do now. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, I need 50 cards to upgrade. 
So 50 cards to upgrade is quite a, quite a few, isn't it, basically? So um, therefore, um, it means that I've got to then open up the bombs and I've got to try and get cards. That's the only way to get cards. I don't believe you can buy them. You might be able to buy them, I'm not sure. But as you can see, I've, I've upgraded all of mine now to the most I can upgrade. And I either need more gold or more, uh, more cards in order to be able to do that. The cards you get from the bombs and the gold you get from the bombs as well. As you can see, this one I haven't opened. You can also go to the shop, incidentally. So you click on the shop and they have little deals like today. They've got a stack of gems and one bomb. Or, oh, you can buy some cards as well well look, you just have to pay gold for them so you can actually buy the cards and level up so you don't need the gems just depends on what cards are available and they only do certain ones each day so therefore if you've got enough gold in there and i'm guessing it's probably more gold than you would need normally just playing the game essentially so therefore you're spending a bit now if you want to uh, i guess it all just comes out on your your app and everything when you want to buy stuff you can buy crackers as well so you can buy the uh, the bombs oh i've never seen a mental bomb metal bomb before so the dynamic and the rocket i've never seen the dynamic either uh, i've only had the rocket that's one of them that i've had before um i guess when you level up you get better um, better bombs as well and inside those bombs are better things basically so here you've got the goblets of gold as well. You can buy the goblets of gold and you buy those normally buying them with gems. Uh, so what you would do is you buy gems basically. So a bit like Vivi, you buy gems, but in this case you're not buying collectibles that you can you can sell or anything. You're literally just buying them to play in the game. Now this may be a play to earn in the future. Uh, there may be something to do with their collectibles. They do have NFTs essentially, or they are integrating that into it. So maybe in the future you'll be able to even buy gems and buy collectibles and that kind of thing as well. So bear that in mind um, because I think that's all coming. It's very very new. Uh, but as you can see, you can get 99 pence. You can get 50 gems so that's not bad for 99p is it 399 a goblet of gems that's pretty good value as well uh, and then obviously the more gems you want the the quicker it is to level up your characters if you've got more gems basically so if you want to go there all out then that's what you need to do So let's have a little bit of a gameplay, shall we? Let's go to the gameplay so we can see what you have to do. Uh, oh, incidentally, if you click on any of these little things at the top here with the little arrows or the little pluses, you automatically go to the shop as well. So if you want to level up on your gems or what have you. Uh, and then the final setting is the uh, the shop. Obviously, we've got the shop there. And then settings. Now, I blocked out that. That's your player ID. Don't know if it makes a difference or not, but you can put the music on, put the sound on, log in with Facebook, log in with Google, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, there's all that cool stuff. So, um, let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look at a game. Uh, we're going to hit the... Uh, oh, I'm going to put that to uh, to open in a few hours' time because it takes three hours, and let's put a game in. Now, I'm not going to be able to win anything because of the fact that my, my things are already completely locked, unfortunately. I've got enough in there. So I will win some stuff. I win cups, but I won't win anything else, um, which cups elevates you in points, but it's the gems and the bombs that you really want. But obviously, once it's all full, the only way to open those is to buy more gems or to buy more gold. So, uh, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time for it to load. This is on my mobile. Now, as I said, it is based on Indian folklore from what I can gather. So you've got the, um, you know, all the characters have got their own specific thing based on that folklore. So let's start off. So you can see what you do is you basically drag your character from the bottom when it fills up here. So you're looking for this thing to fill up down the bottom there. And when it does, as you can see, this archer is firing towards that little tower. And now I've put another character in as well. And this is before they've even brought out anything. And you can see it basically goes towards the tower, but they put a witch in its path. So now I have to fight that witch. Now, because of this tower here firing at me, you can see that he actually killed my little knight. But because I've got an archer there, I'm actually killing it at the same time. Uh, you might have noticed a little glitch there as well in the AI. Sometimes it happens the character gets stuck on the side of the tower. So therefore you can just keep firing it and keep shooting it. Now, incidentally, once the character has blown up the tower, he will then move into the next position to fire out the next tower. So if you want to, you can go to one tower, then the other. As you can see, this is the fireball uh, breathing um, witch type thing uh, that I said about. But as you can see, there's no fireballs coming out of it whatsoever. So I think that's a glitch in the AI. As you can see, I'm playing Lily at the moment. And Lily is basically uh, the computer. So normally they've got their own name like Lily, Steve or, uh, you know, some other names like that. So, you know, you're playing the computer. Uh, this one here, I forgot to talk about this. This is a little tree. And basically what happens is these little bombs come walking out and then they shoot to the nearest thing. 
Uh, as you can see here, this is the monkey tower. I put that there because that stays there all the way along. And then here you've got your knights. They've just released a knight, so that knight is now going to run towards the tower. I'm still waiting for things to heat up over here. So therefore, um, I did this monkey thing just so you can see. But you can see it's not massively strong, but because he was already fighting it, then it got a little bit. But as you can see, when it walks towards the tower, it's very, very easily killed. This guy here is the one that jumps and runs all the way over the top. So all you have to do is let him go. Now you see he completely ignores the witch, but the trouble is that means the witch can kill him really, really easily because he's not trying to fight the witch or anything like that as well. You see this little grid here? This little grid means that you can't go into that grid with your character. So once you destroy the character, you get a, a tower even, you get a little bit of an area more than you can go before. And now you see, when it gets to one, one minute, this thing here goes super quick. You can now take all of your characters and start pummeling the uh, the other side, you see. Look, now I just put a thing in its way to try and stop it from getting there. So you can see that's a good tactic to do. I've now killed both of their towers just there. Uh, and you can see that I've now got this full range just here to put my characters. Basically, I found that the further you get them towards the red, the quicker they get to their destination and it's the better. Uh, in this case, you can see I'm just putting an archer there so you can see anyway. It's not a great one to use unless you're only firing at the, the towers because if you're firing at characters, he's really easy to kill. As you'll see, this thing here, this is their character. He's about to kill me in just two seconds flat. There you go. So, and depending on what level, this one here is leveled up quite nicely. They fight against each other. As you can see, this thing just floats around doing nothing really because of the AI and the way it is. But you see that the character goes towards the nearest one. And then you can see all of these here. I can use any of these at any time. And the battle is now over. So there you go. So that was a quick version of the battle, or not quick version, but there you can see I now got 30 as my, my score. And uh, in that case, what did I win? Let's have a look what I won. I won 30 gold pieces. And I also won some cups as well. So it comes out like this. Uh, sorry, 30 cups is what I won. And I won 150 gold. So I do still get the gold for being able to win. So even if you're playing and you haven't opened your crackers or whatever, then you can still get the gold and you get the cups. However, you don't get the gems. And if you don't have the gems, you can't open your dynamites unless you just leave it for an amount of time. So one little, uh, one little thing I do suggest you do every time, and that is um, to simply go into the app itself when you're not using it and open one of those things to put it on timer for three hours or whatever, close the app and just walk away, do what you're doing or whatever, and then go back three hours later and then explode that and then go on to the next one. So if you're not planning on playing exactly that moment, still pop into the app anyway and do those things so that that way you don't lose out when it comes to the gems and the gold. Uh, so there you go. That was a uh, an explanation of the entire game of Epico Regal so that that way you can get in and start playing it and have some fun. And who knows, maybe you can earn, you know, Omi in the future or maybe you can earn collectibles that you'll be able to sell on the market or I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it, uh, but it's all quite exciting stuff and uh, it's building up to be quite a fun game to play as well. Uh, if you'd like to know more about it, then feel free to put in comments below and I'll answer any questions that I can. Uh, hopefully it's uh, it's uh, it gives you an idea of... Uh, of how to play and, and how to do it and as i said i'm not an expert on it by any stretch of the imagination uh, if you want to watch an expert then wait for orion crypto his video is going to be coming out very soon and when it does come out he's going to go into every single little detail and all of the concepts that he's used to be able to get himself to twenty four thousand eight hundred and twelve cups which is first place uh, and he even won competition, I believe. He won a competition. They do a competition every so often, and he won third place at the time. I don't know why. I think they were messing around with the cups a little bit at that point as well. So he won third place, but that was still pretty cool. Uh, and he got real money. He got Amazon vouchers, and he got real money for playing as well. So, uh, you know, even if they don't bring Omi out for it, or even if they don't do anything with Vivi and Omi, then uh, you can still earn money by playing it anyway. But it just means that it's not quite a play to earn. It's more of just a championship game if they feel like putting one in. So... Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on today's video. As always, don't take any of this as financial investment advice in any way, shape or form uh, because crypto can go up and it can make you loads of money or it can go down and you can completely lose your shirt. But that is essentially crypto. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.